Hi, yeah. I'm out in my shed and I'm going to be making some of the porcelain animals today. So I've had a go already. I'm on foxes this morning. So I'll show you. I've made one already with this little tail. So I'm going to have a little go at making those. So each time I make them, they come out slightly differently. I don't use a mould or anything. And uh, sometimes they, they uh, I come out a little bit smaller and sometimes they're a little bit bigger. So I've got myself a little lump of um, porcelain clay. It dries out quite quickly, so you've got to be a little bit um, careful when you're holding it. So we keep it moving a little bit. Um, and like I said, we'll do foxes, but I've um, been making some different animals just recently. I've done cats, dogs, um, beaver, uh, all kinds of different things and a few doggy commissions. So um, people have sent me photographs of their pets and I've had a go at getting a, a likeness to them. So with the foxes, I'm starting at the feet. I don't know if it makes a difference really, but I always like to start there. So I've made a little slit in the clay and now I'm just modelling with my fingers to pull out the shape. I've kind of got a, an image in my head of how it's going to look and I can, I'm working towards that now. Hopefully you can see how that's panning out. So these, as I say, I break off a little lump of clay and sometimes they're slightly bigger or slightly slimmer, but generally they're working. I don't know how big a piece of clay this was, probably um, I've got old scales that were with my grands from her dairy and um, I think this is probably six ounces. I don't really know what that is in grams. I think is it two ounces is 50 grams, so about 150 grams maybe, something like that. So now I'm just putting in a little bit of the detail just to give myself a guideline more than anything, so for its legs. And I just keep modelling it out as much as I can, just to kind of flatten the surface and get the thickness that I want. Got to be a little bit careful with thickness of clay, otherwise um, it can stay damp inside for quite a long time. And no matter how much you dry it, I think the saying is um, approximately the thickness of your finger of clay. So what I tend to do is, um, these are obviously going to be thicker than my finger, so I make a, a hole in the base so that that kind of allows some of the dampness in the centre of the clay to um, work its way out. So he's getting a little bit taller now and I'm starting to put a chest in. I'm going to do the front leg separately. So I'm going to just bring up the body and I'll just attach those bits as we go along. Doesn't look much like a fox yet, but it'll get the foxy feeling in a minute. Okay. I'm trying to do this a little bit more quickly so that it's not right watching paint dry. There we go. So now I'm shaping the head a little bit. So if Start, we've started at the feet, I've put in the, the little hips, it's got a little bit of a chest, straightish back and then we're going into the neck. I have to put my glasses on so I can see for the face now. So I kind of think the character of my fox has a little kind of turned up nose. I kind of think that makes him look a bit foxy but not too scary. So that's his little nose just worked out. A little bit of a turn up. You've also got to imagine what this is going to be like once it's painted. There's a lot of the detail you put on with the underglaze paints. There we go. So he's got a little turned up nose now. And I'm just pulling out his cheeks a little bit. Okay. Right, so now... That's the basic shape of the fox for his body. It's quite smooth. So, okay, so that's as far as we've got now. And what I'll do next is um, I'm going to make the attachments. 
I'll also um, make the hole inside so that any damp bits of air can escape. Okay. It's quite warm out here today, so I've got my clay wrapped in the bag. So we'll just make his tail next as the next piece. got a nice bushy tail comes to a point at the end and I'll keep just putting that up to the fox just to check the size yeah that seems about okay I've made a few of these now so I'm getting used to the size that it needs to be and I just put a little bit of detail so that when I paint um, the underglazes I've got a, a line to work towards to make the um, the feathery effect from the white at the tip of the tail to the orangey body of the fox. Okay, now I'm going to score just to um, make sure the tail adheres properly. So that's the tail scored and I'll also just score a bit on the back where it's going to fit onto the fox. I've got some um, some slip, some liquid clay. That's like the glue to stick on. And then we'll just give it a bit of a wiggle. Make sure that's in position. And again, they, each time I make them, the tail, sometimes it's up, sometimes it's down. But it's quite nice to have a bit of variety. When I do craft fairs, a lot of people spend a lot of time having a look at each of the animals to make sure they've got the very one they want because they do take on their own characters. Some are cheeky. Okay. Some of them just talk to you more than others. That's what you're looking for, isn't it? Okay. Everybody sees something different. Right, so that's his tail. Now, um, the next thing is his front legs. Now these I make separately, only because I quite like that they're very thin and slim. So we'll, um, we'll see how they look. They look quite cute when they're finished. We've just got to be careful what the, while it's drying, because they do get very fragile. But you just don't want to knock them while you're putting them in the kiln. Okay, so that's the right length. And I'll just measure it up to the body. Make a little mark with my thumbnail. Okay, so two similar length legs. Again, I'm going to score the body where I'm going to attach the legs. Okay, so there's a few little to score where it's going to go. Just helps to um, really hold those legs in place then. And again, a little bit of the slip. making sure the feet are flat and not not gone hollow where I've rolled it out and again I'm going to score the end of the shoulder where it's going to attach just put that into place give it a bit of a squidge and a wiggle just to fit it again score that one So these will take just a, a few days to dry now, once they're finished. Um, I dry them as long as possible really, just to make sure they're well and truly dried out on this on the inside. And then they'll be fired um, for a, the first firing, the bisque firing. I go up to about a thousand degrees for my porcelain clay. So I'll load them in the kiln. I'm hoping to take some more video of um, unloading load in the kiln so you'll see things coming in and out then okay so those are just smoothed into place just roughly for now those are its little front legs it's starting to take a bit more shape looking a bit more foxy now okay 
Right, now the next thing he needs is a couple of ears. So we'll use the bit that I rolled out for the legs. Just make some little pointy ears for him. So I tend to start with a ball and then pinch it into a triangle shape. Flatten it tight slightly. And I've just got a couple of tools that are good. If they've got a point on the end, that kind of makes the interior shape of the ear. Okay, a bit more. I don't tend to score the ears only because sometimes you can see the marks coming through. So we'll just give that a little wiggle into place. ear into place. There we go. Just make them a little bit level and then using your tool just to smooth in any any little bits of the slip just to smooth it in. they're well stuck on. Also as it's drying you don't want any cracks to come around those ears. Fry coming in. There we go. So that's pretty much the little fox made. That's his tail on the back from the sides there you go and so he'll be drying out um, over the next few days into the kiln for a bisque firing and then I'll be painting him so hopefully later on I'll show you a little bit of film of some painting with the underglazes as well okay thanks very much for watching bye bye now